how was it when you actually unfurled the national flag and took that picture of you smiling so much? Uh, do you recall that moment? Can you relive the moment? Or everything was surreal at that time. It's only when you came down and you thought about it on hindsight, you're able to recall it all. That one night is imprinted. That is not surreal. The rest of the track kind of the days have got mixed up. Even when we see the photographs, we were like, okay, this was that day or this was that day based on what we were wearing. So the track became all mixed up. Uh, I do recall moments of why the hell am I doing this? You know, one day when I was low on water, I got a slight headache. That didn't feel good. But a little about that seventh day, 14th of July, that we went to the summit, the day started at 12 o'clock at night. We started the ascent at 12.15 a.m. in the dark with headlights and all of that. And we had a steep climb of 4,100 feet. And we were just straight. We just had to go up that way. And we reached there at 9.15 in the morning. The first one, two hours was sheer rock. So it wasn't even the poles that you could use. You just had to use your hands and you just had to go one rock over the other, the over the other. The rest of the way, way was all zigzag up a stony, muddy mountain till the time you reach the rim of the crater, which because it's a, it's a volcanic mountain. So you reach the rim of the crater and you've reached the top. But the topmost point is still about an hour's walk away. Because this is the rim, and then you walk around the crater to go to the Uru point, which is the topmost point of Kilimanjaro. That was, you were tired by that time. And we had been told over and over again that this will be the toughest thing that you do. Because you were at a place where oxygen was very less. You, the, it was very cold. We had to walk very, very slow because otherwise, if you get out of breath, how do you take your breath back? Because there is no oxygen. So that moment of reaching Stella Point where the other group was returning, we reached the top when the other group, members of our group had gone to the topmost point, had come back and they were on that peak, on that edge to go down and we had just reached did feel for a moment that, damn, this is not cool. But then that's where your definition of your own success comes into play, that relax, it's not a race. The aim is to finish it. And those guys were talking about needing oxygen and all of that. And we were like, oh, I'm happy that I didn't need any, any of that. I could come smoothly without any external aid. Walking to Uru point, the topmost point, I did feel choked up because that time it actually hit me that finally, you don't realize, but every day you're walking for past six days, we had been walking. We reached that and I sat for a moment. So my husband was foresighted enough to carry the national flag. He's an army officer. He can't help himself. So he took a few, uh, he, he took a few of his single photographs. I said, I need a time, I, I need a moment to sit. And then that two minutes of sitting and then going up and getting the photographs clicked, it looked as if it was okay. You didn't feel tired anymore because you were there. And it was such a feeling of, yes. Such a feeling of, yes. And nobody can take it from you. It isn't luck. Yeah. It isn't, oh, you've done it, so it must be easy. Oh, it is a mountain after all. It wasn't because universe was kind to me. It was because I jolly well walked every bit of the way, every step on my own two legs. But it was an unapologetic, yes. I don't think I can forget that. And I don't think it will... I don't think I can, I can forget how I felt 
how it was, how simple it looked. It was a simple moment. It wasn't a euphoric moment. It was a simple, sweet, peaceful, yes, moment. And then started the decline, which was the most tough thing to do. Because decline is steep, my knees pained. That day, Rashmi, we walked for 20 hours. And I am not exaggerating. From 12 in the morning, 12.15 in the morning to the peak, 20 minutes at the peak, down to the first camp, spent about an hour, 15 minutes there. Then we started at 4 o'clock again. It became dark. It was raining that evening. We reached the second camp at 10 o'clock. So literally on our feet for 20 hours. I have toes which are blue right now, still. I stopped having the painkiller medicine after about five days of my coming down because my toes used to still hurt. 20 hours, yeah. Oh my God. Freedom. That, that, that was tough. I don't think it was surreal. I, that is imprinted. That will stay with me. <laughs> and even if you forget, your toes will remind you. <laughs> remind me still. I tried to go for a walk yesterday and I couldn't because of my, the toe, the pain was still there. I thought it was okay, but no, the shoe still hurt. So yeah, I think another week for that. Wow. So yeah, that is, and I have to say that once I came down, the enormity of what I had done came to face when I got, when I finally put that post up, which was also like, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I, but chalo, okay, yeah, might, might as well. This is like, I've done it, you know. And then the response I got from the world, that's when the enormity of the situation actually hit me as to, yeah, and that's when my husband said that, do you know that the success rate of Mount Kilimanjaro is about 50 to 65%. I said, meaning? He says, meaning only six, 50 to 65% people who try it actually make it. The rest do not make it. And that's when it occurred that, okay, have done a good job. <laughs> have a good job. Broke a few labels, shattered a few limiting beliefs. Mm, yeah, have done a good job.